Hi, this is Bonnie, and today we're going to start on a card that um, I um, created this on a gel press, and then I turned that um, into digital paper. Makes it a little bit easier for stamping. You don't have to worry about distressed oxide not blending with your inks. So anyway, um, today um, what has inspired me is the brand new um, sentiments from Fairy Hugs. On this particular set, you get seven one-line um, verses. And um, so anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use the first one. And it says, be still and listen, the earth is singing. These are really nice um, sentiments and they are, um, I don't know, they're just the right size. So based upon that inspiration, I pulled out some Fairy Hugs stamps that I'm going to start using. Um, the first one is called the Musical Dandelion, and if you look close, the dandelion seeds are music notes. And then I'm also going to be using um, one of my favorites um, from Fairy Hug is Bryla. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get started, and I might have to get some more washi tape if that doesn't stay down. So this is um, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go ahead and stamp the dandelion, musical dandelion. And I am just going to use um, Versafine Clear Nocturne. This is not going to be um, a really complicated card. It's going to be fairly easy. So I've got that all set up. And I'm going to remove that and I'm going to use my nocturne ink. Um, we are having an ice storm snow day, so my lighting isn't the best today. I'm going to have some shadows and I'm going to have some glare from the lights above. And I apologize for that. But I guess it's better than trying to see something in the dark. Okay, let's see how that came out. I don't want that to move at all. And I can see I need a little spot up there. And I am gonna put better washi tape on there. We don't need this moving. Okay, try that again. I'm also thinking I um, it is really important for your ink pad to be juicy, not really juicy, but um, it needs to be, make sure you have enough in it. And in this case, because I use my Nocturne a lot, I'm going to need to refill it before I do my next video. Okay, let's check that out now. There we go. That's exactly what I want. So, my next um, stamp I'm going to be putting on is the Bryla Stamp Fairy. And I forgot to take out that acetate. And she's going to sit right up here on top. And I want to make her so that her wings do are on. And that should work. Okay. Um, I'm also going to be coloring in her wings. I love her wings. Make sure she's lined up. Okay. And this one I am sure, I wish I had filled up my, because she's a solid stamp. She has really pretty details, but I don't really want to stamp her a lot. I don't want to ink her up a lot. All right. And of course, I got some ink on my lid. There we go. I'm trying to cover up that glare as best I can.
Okay. I'm not very happy that that's going to be moving on me. There we go. I need more washi tape. I don't know if you find that your magnets that come with your uh, Misty don't seem to hold on sometimes. So I add the washi tape. I know people also put things in the corner and then they can just, you know, put it back and it's not messed up. I purchased this pad and it doesn't allow me to put things in the corner. Could be I have it set up wrong. Okay, let's check that out. Yep, that's what I want. She's really, really pretty. She has um, the right amount of detail, I think. All right, so then the next thing I'm gonna add is a sentiment at the bottom. And um, it's not the easiest thing to use my little, um, but I can. I'm gonna put that right there. I think that'll be good. It's not been stamped yet, so it's a little bit um, clinging. Okay. Now, these one-line stamps, it doesn't matter whose stamp you have, you have to be um, fairly careful when you stamp it. And I find that if I just leave this flat and stamp on top of it, um, it tends to make sure it gets all of the, um, I don't know how to explain it. If I hold it up, I only tend to get um, part of the stamp, but if I lay it flat, it seems to work better for me. And again, um, you don't want to push too, too hard or you'll get a blur. And that's with any stamp. Um, that is a sentiment like this. And that's perfect. It's exactly what I wanted. All right, so that's the main focus of what I want to do for my cart. Now I'm going to add a little bit more to it and I'm going to get that together. Okay, so I decided I'm just gonna add some of the stencil. And this stencil happens to be um, Fairy Hugs, um, I think this is the um, Swirls, it's the Swirls. Um, we also have a Spiral, and I always have to think, is it Swirls or Spiral? This one is Swirls. And uh, it has a really nice vintage look to it, I think, too. And if you look at it, some people even can see um, let me see if I can even show that to you very well. Let me see. There we go. It, some people think this has like a heart shape, and you could actually just um, stencil that off too if you wanted to. It has a little bit of a, it would be not a perfect shape heart in terms of a line on the outside, but it would give you the look of one. I am not going for the heart type shape today. I'm just wanting to do a little bit. And I'm also going to be using um, Distress Oxide Tumble Glass. And the part in the background is already has a very light hint of blue, so I thought I would just be adding a little bit to that. And I like I always hold this down and then I take a peek. And I want a little bit more. Let's see, I want it just to be kind of like blended in the background. So it looks like it's part of the paper. And that looks pretty good. I think I'm gonna come down just a tad. Yeah. And then I'm gonna do it, flip this whole thing around. I'm gonna do, there's a little bit of blue over here in the paper as well. And I'm just gonna add a little bit there. 
And you can always do it based upon whatever design you have in the background. Just add it and it just kind of gives it a subtle look. It's really kind of pretty. So we should be done. And that's how the um, how that's going to look. Um, the only other thing I really would like to do is I want to color in those wings. So I'm going to go ahead and color those wings off screen. Unless you, um, yeah, I'm going to color them off screen, and um, I'll be right back. Okay, it's just like me to change my mind. I decided I'm going to go ahead and show you how I do color her wings. It's not going to be that difficult. Um, I am using colored pencils and I am using a Prisma colored pencil and this one is 994 and it is if you don't have these it is more of a hot pink I'm trying to pull out the color from down below to use it as my darkest color um, and I'm just going to come in here and think of it in terms of shading and just add that little bit to the to that part right there close to her and around again the bottom not a lot and then I'm going to come in and use another pink and that pink is going to be um, 993 and I'm just going to come up from that Blending that in just a little bit. Now you could color each one of these sections too if you want and give it you know, a really pretty look. Also, it doesn't need to be solid. Um, and then I'm gonna come in, I think with a little bit, even though this one's a little bit, I don't know how to say the color, but it's not as hot pink looking. This is 929. And I can already see I need a little bit of a darker shade coming back in. So, um, but before I do that, I'm going to finish this part off. And this is 1014, and I really should sharpen that, but it's kind of tiny. And I'm just going to finish up and blend this all in together. I could have moved a little bit closer, but it really isn't a detail coloring. just to give her some color in her wings. And you can make those really pretty too. So um, I need a little bit of a darker color and um, I am going to use, I need a darker pink, but um, don't see one that I really want. So I'm gonna go ahead and use, this is a um, Crimson Lake, it's 925. And I just, like I said, I need this a little bit darker for the shading. So it gives a little bit more depth to it. So you can start out with like um, the hot pink and then you can come back in with a more of a cherry if you want. I think I'm going to add a little bit up here. On both sides. And then I'm probably going to use my gold sparkly pin too. All right, so I need to blend that back in a little bit. That I, Now that I came back in with a darker color, I need to blend the colors that I started with. So I'm just going back to the first one, which is 994, just to sort of blend that in. And then the 993, just like I said, I'm just trying to blend that in. Okay, I think that looks good. So the next thing I like to do is I have a sparkle um, pen. It's from Pentel and it's this one's gold. Um, as you can see, I'm gonna be needing more because I use this a lot. Um, and for this, what I'm gonna do is there's a couple spots in here and I am going to get that closer. Okay, there's a couple detail spots in these wings. And I am just going to come back in, even though this is hard with that, with my uh, camera right in front of me. I'm going to go in and 
highlight these. There we go. It'll give a little shimmer to the wings. And you know what? I'm going to pull my other light on a second. So maybe that will show the, the shimmer a little bit better. I don't know if you can see that. And then there's these little spots up here close to her. And I'm going to color in with the gold. And a little line right there, better. And then these tips, I'm going to add a little bit so you can see that. You can kind of see that better now. Um, yeah. So then the other thing, just to tie in a little bit of that gold, I'm going to come in here and um, I am not music, a musical person, but I'm assuming this is like half notes. Um, the ones that are not solid, I'm coming in and adding that gel, that gold gel pen so that it all ties in together. You don't have to do all of them, but it's kind of pretty if you like sparkle. Let me show you. It's pretty. Okay. So just take your time and color those in. The um, circles on these are um, plenty big enough um, for you to color easily. Oops. All right, let's check to see if I missed any. I don't think I did. If I did, I'll make sure I get it. All right, so that's a fairly simple card um, to do. It doesn't really take very much time. And um, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that back up. And um, I am going to distress the edges with ink. And then um, I'm going to put that on a card. And I'll be right back. I decided I wanted to show you this little trick, and um, it's not really um, intentional, but it always seems to work. If you save your paper that you have used from previous edging, um, for instance, this right here is chip sapphire, and if I come back in here with the um, tumble glass and I start pulling this from the side, it'll combine the two and give me more of a, I don't know, purple, purplish look as opposed to this part up here which was strictly done over to the side. I don't know if you can see there's a difference. This is more of a purpley and then this is more of the of the true um, blue. So um, it's not really I you know always intentional but it works if you know that you want to do it. Um, if you already have ink down and you want them to be combined. Um, I liked the color of it being darker down here, um, so that's working for me. And um, I'll go ahead and show you how it happens if I just do it without using this on the side. So now if I'm going to come over here and just add it, it's just going to be the tumble glass. I know a lot of people don't use paper underneath. But if you wanted to give this a try, it's a little bit different. Like, for instance, if I want a little bit of that purple right there to go with that, I think it doesn't always, you know, work exactly right. But if you can see the ink on there, um, it should pull it a little bit. I guess it depends on how long it's been on there. But give it a try. You get something... A different look. Alright, so I just wanted you to see how I did that when I edged it. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and put that, I think I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of gold around the outside to mat it, and then on black paper. Okay, so I have it matted and on a card, and um, this is um, pretty simple. You can, it takes a little bit of time, but it's a pretty simple card. Um, I just go ahead and show you again how you can add those, the 
gold um, gel pen. So um, again, I'm so glad that you were able to stop by and check out this video. And I will have all of the um, product that I used down below in the description. Thanks again.